Are you sick of those stupid ads that claim to help you have a simple tip to lose weight? Seriously, stop it, internet. Instead, use your brain to trick your stomach into eating less. Hey foodies, Trace here, spewing science for D News. Eating is one of our favorite pastimes in America. In fact, the USDA says Americans age 15 or older spend 10 and a half hours a week simply eating or drinking. It's like a quarter of a work week. Back in 2009, the World Health Organization released a study showing Americans aren't obese only because of a lack of physical activity, but also we kind of, we overeat. Portion control is important, but it's hard to measure portions when we're out at a restaurant, guys. We've got a solution though. Use some visual trickery. When we look at our meal, the brain is taking in all sorts of information, from the sight and the smell to the plate size and the amount of food on it. And from that, you decide how much of it you're gonna eat. A study in the Journal of Consumer Research placed two different fork sizes at an Italian restaurant to see what would happen. And in the end, diners who used large forks ate less than those with small forks. The reason, they guess, has to do with goal-oriented eating. We go to restaurants expecting to come out satiated. Thus, a large fork makes a bigger dent in the food on your plate, visually speaking. That's really important. We see that we've eaten more. And because of that large dent, we feel like we've eaten a lot in only just a few bites. The same goes for the size of dishware. With small plates, the fork size doesn't really matter. But with large plates that were both high dining, like empty with just a little portion, and completely chock full, like at a chain restaurant, the size of the fork affected how much we ate. While the fork does matter less with a smaller plate, the plate size matters all the time. A study in the Journal of Pediatrics found if offered, kids will select from a large and small bowl, either one, and fill them to the brim with cereal and milk regardless. The larger bowls create significantly more food waste and they overeat. The problem is we're not very in tune with our bodies. Since we never learn to be hungry and eat properly in the West, the brain uses the eyes as a visual cue to measure how much we've eaten. Rather than listening to the 100 million neurons in our gut, which is more than our spinal cord, by the way, a quick fix is to take time and learn about your body. The authors of the Large Fork study put it this way, when you're hungry, drink water instead of eating. Pay attention to how the feeling of hunger goes away. If it returns, you do need food, and if not, you were just thirsty. We've got what my mom always called a weak hunger reflex. 10 minutes after the meal begins, your brain will begin to note the rising insulin levels and blood sugars in your body, and nerve cells in your stomach will begin to help you feel satiated. Once you feel even the slightest bit of pressure from your stomach, you should stop eating. If you have packed it to the rafters, like Brian Regan says, then you've overeaten, and that's bad. Welcome to America. The hunger reflex is super awesome. I definitely find myself eating less day to day. I still overeat on vacations and holidays and stuff, but you know, what can you do? If you're interested in more food science, click on one of these videos over here. And if you do this experiment at home and learn more about your body, tell us your experiences down in the comments section. Thanks a lot for watching D News, everybody. Subscribe for more, and we'll see you next time.